Today, we're gonna to share with you the top 10 best secrets, tips, and tricks that we've learned over the last several years working inside a high level. This is our agency secrets that we share with all of our students, and now we're sharing them with you. So make sure you stay tuned to the whole entire thing, because I guarantee you, there's not gonna be one secret that you don't wanna miss. All right, the first thing that we're gonna start with, and it's probably the most important thing, and this is the most common issue that we have with a lot of the users, is issues with saving, not being able to function, things disappearing on the screen and everything else. Nine times out of 10, the reason that's happening is because one, you're not using the proper browser. Proper browser in our experience has been Chrome. Chrome hands down for pretty much everything. The second thing is when people are using Chrome, they're using Chrome with a bunch of extensions, whether it's they're using it with a Grammarly or all kinds of color zillas and all these other things. Sometimes those things do not get updated and they create conflicts. We're gonna teach you a trick right now that you can leverage that whenever you're working inside a high level that you create a working browser that you can leverage. Now, what do I mean by that? If you're using Chrome, one of the cool tricks about Chrome is you can create multiple like kind of work areas or profiles that are gonna be able to be completely clean without any extensions. So for instance, you notice that I have high level and a couple of other ones, but this is how easy it is to create. You're gonna come into your Chrome browser. You're gonna go up on top right and you're gonna see a little icon there or whatever else. You're gonna come in here, you're gonna select it and you're gonna hit add. When you add, you can go ahead and continue without an account. And basically now you can create a work profile. So for instance, this will be GHL. I can pick a color, right? I'll make a blue. I hit done and now I have a clean working version without any extensions that will allow me to consistently work in here and not have as many saving issues. The other thing that people need to realize regardless of the browsers that you're using is that every time you open up a tab, what will happen is, is that it will use memory. So for instance, if you hover over this and you're using Chrome, eventually you're gonna see that this is using 832 megabytes of memory. The more tabs you have open, the more memory you're gonna be using, the less likely you are to save properly and the more conflicts are gonna arise. Things are going to load slower and everything else. Sometimes we log into people's systems and they literally have 50 tabs open. 50 tabs is going to blow up your computer, especially if you have a laptop or a computer that does not have that much memory. So please understand that when you're working with that, especially in Chrome, it's going to cause a lot of errors for you. Now, the number two best kept secret and something we teach all of our students is the duplication key. If you are working in any software, not just high level, if you go over to the left hand side and you right click and you hit duplicate, it will actually create another instance of high level without you having to log in and going to a different window. So for instance, if I'm working inside of sites and I need something in the other tab, maybe inside of a workflow, I now can go easily through there back and forth. Now, again, I did mention that you don't want to open up a gazillion tabs, but while you're working in a specific instance of high level, having a few tab opens is definitely not going to hurt you. So for instance, I'll come over here and I'll duplicate another section or another area. Now, what I will use caution on is if you're working on funnels in one area, make sure you don't have another tab open that you're working in another funnel because that does create a lot of the saving issues. So again, this alone has saved me. I can't even tell you how many countless times managing my tabs, working in an individual workstation and making sure that I'm using Chrome. Now, a lot of people sometimes over time and over years have a corrupted version of Chrome. If you're getting a lot of errors, things are disappearing, things are still not saving correctly, it's probably because you have a corrupted Chrome like installations and you're gonna have to delete Chrome and reinstall it again, or you're gonna have to update your computer. So those are the things that kind of run in very consistently, not only with this web tool, but pretty much any of the web tools out there. So tip number three is the order in which we learn things. The way we like to teach here in Automated Marketer is one, we look, at opportunities and pipelines first because they dictate how the operation or what the build is going to look like. So for instance, if I have a new lead workflow like you see on the screen, I can go through and understand, okay, what do I need to build? Do I need a form? Do I need a calendar and everything else? So if I understand how to kind of create a visual layout, it actually gives me a good working path of what I need to build. Secondly, I go into calendars because nine times out of 10, I can use it not only for me personally, but if I'm using a high ticket or a local business, calendars is where I got to focus. And I got to be honest, calendars have happens to be one of the biggest areas that people struggle with. So I tend to teach that next. Following after that, I learned forms and surveys because a lot of actions inside of workflows will come off of forms and surveys. That is also the customer interaction that nine times out of 10 you're doing. The other piece of it is then we start learning products and payments to understand how the product and payment workflows work, or more importantly, how to collect money, which is one of the most vital things you want to do inside the system. And then after that, I start playing around with funnels and websites and really understanding how to build those because you need all those other things I mentioned in order to have them inside the funnel to actually 
sell or get somebody to download a link or somebody completes a form or books an appointment. So that becomes the, like the fourth or fifth step there. And then the last step is the workflows because the workflows is kind of the heart of everything, but you need to know how the other components work in order for you to fully understand how a workflow is going to work. So that is kind of the order you want to keep to. And it's very, very important that you kind of understand that kind of pace in which you do it. A lot of mistakes that we see people make is they come in here and they try to learn everything at once. And I can guarantee you that that is definitely a path that you don't want to follow. Now, the other big, which is going to be tip number four is email. Email has significantly changed in this year of 2024. And I can tell you that if you want to need more information on exactly what's transpired with Google and Yahoo, you're going to want to check out our other video that we have that is about all the changes. Now that video goes through it very thoroughly and it's something you want to watch. But more importantly, what you have to understand is that there is significant change in here that's very hard for people to understand. So if I go to settings and I go to email services, you're going to notice that I have a domain here. My domain that I send email out of because I have Mailgun or whether it's Lead Connector, either or you're going to notice a sending domain here. Now, if I want better email deliverability inside my account, I want to make sure I move to a dedicated domain. Now, a dedicated domain is going to create something like this because this is my brand. This is my email. Now, I got to make sure, one, I have an email that is like, let's say, Nuno at automatedmarketer.co because whatever you're sending from, your from address needs to match. Now, what do I mean by that? If this is your sending domain, we really don't care about the MG, the LC, whatever you put in front of it, replies, anything. It doesn't honestly matter. What does matter is this last part. Now, if you go back and anytime you're working inside of, let's say contacts, and I go to the first contact I see here. All right. If I come in here and you notice, I want to send this person an email. The biggest mistake people don't understand is that has to match. So I have to go, let's say Nuno at automatedmarketer.co. And now that will have be a brand and match, right? Given the misspelling in there, but you get the point. So it's very important that your sending domain matches the domain you're saying you're sending from. Now it used to not be the case, but now it is definitely important for you to understand that. And there's a whole bunch of other rules that you want to go over, especially over these changes. So make sure you check out that video. It's actually really important not only for Mailgun, but for any sending kind of email software that you have. So the next tip that I want to make sure everybody understands is A2P messaging. Whenever you get a high level account or you're interested in text messaging, there is an entire process you need to follow in order to get registered. The biggest two mistakes that we get is that people don't do this process correctly because they are rushing it. When you set up A2P, you need to make sure that whatever you get your tax ID number from, that there is a complete match on the white sheet that you get to what is happening inside a high level in the sense of whatever that white sheet says, if it has a particular name for your LLC, your corporation, whatever it is, and there is a specific address that that address is the address you're inputting inside a high level in your business settings. The biggest thing that we see is that people forget, like probably filed it in another state or they change their address, not realizing that they never changed it with the state. Now the robot in here that does the check automatically goes to that state site and just reads whatever is there. So if there's a mismatch, it's because it is missing that information. The second mistake that people make is that they're not understanding that when they're registering a campaign and they're giving examples to high level that is naturally going over to Twilio that you're stating that, Hey, please check this site for our actual form that has the actual terms and service and privacy policy on the page, because that's what you're saying that people are going to check. Or when they click on the link on the terms and service, that it actually goes to a terms and service and a privacy policy. Most of the time when you click on that, it goes nowhere and it's going to fail you automatically. The second thing is on the form that they're sending people to, or the page you're sending people to, it has to be a valid page that's live that has the actual form that has the checkbox that reads that you can send on top of asking for the phone number. So on top of missing the terms of service and the privacy policy that is clickable that people can read, they're missing the actual consent box that gives people permission or lets people tell you whether or not they want to receive a text message. So make sure you have that because that gets tested and verified. So it's very important for you to notice that. Another important tip is that understand that every time you fail registration for the actual text messaging service, you are charged. There is is a charge for when you first register A2P for your brand. And there is a separate charge for the campaign. And I believe it's $14 or I think $21 now, and then another $44. And every time you fail and reapply, you're going to get charged that amount. And if you have rebilling on the account and it's only at $10, you're going to get a bunch of $10 charges because it's trying to get to $44 or whatever the amount is that they're charging at the time for the actual registration of that phone number. So it's very, very important that when you're taking your time to do this, that you follow all the guys that are out there. There's 17 million videos on this thing right now, but you're doing it the right way. Again, save yourself some money and headache and ensuring you're doing the right
right thing when it comes to A2P Messenger. Another tip that we want to share with you is that now High Level has the ability of doing the redirect for the WW and the non-WW directly into the account. What do we mean by this? So if you go into your High Level account, and you go all the way down to your settings. Inside of settings, you're gonna go over to your domains and you're gonna notice you're gonna have usually a WW version of your domain and a non-WW version of your domain. And the reason is you do that now is because you can do URL redirects, meaning if anybody puts a WWW in front of the domain, that it automatically goes to the root. Now, again, if you go over to settings in the left-hand side, you're gonna notice URL redirects. What's cool now is make believe you had a domain that had a WWW on it. You come in here, you select the WW version on it, and in redirect type, you're gonna do all, and then the bottom one is gonna be your root domain, whatever domain is where you wanna send them. So again, you put your WWW in front of here, you select the redirect type as all, and then you set the target domain wherever your root domain is. So in this case, forget the training part, but it would be automatedmarketer.co. Again, didn't have this before, but the reason you have the WW and the regular domain is because you were going to redirect directly in here. So make sure that again, you go into domains, then URL redirects, add a redirect, come in here, make sure that the top part says www, then go right to redirect type, select all, and then put the root domain right here under the target domain. And anytime now somebody puts www in front of it, it goes to the root and you should be building everything in the root, not the www. Now, the next thing that we're going to cover is calendars and the common mistakes that happen there, because again, this happens to be the biggest area of frustration for a lot of users. So a couple things to understand here, whenever you go to calendars and you're doing integrations, if you are an agency owner, and if you want to use the calendar inside the agency, you have to add yourself into the account. So you would go to the agency settings. I would go to team inside of the agency setting. I would go directly to my contact here. I would go to user roles. And then in the account that I need to go into, I would add myself into the account if I want to put myself into the calendar. Now, the biggest other mistake we see when it comes to calendars is one, when you go ahead and you're setting up your calendar and you go under my profile, the biggest error we see is that people forget to sync the calendar. You always have to ensure that you're syncing the calendar because if you don't sync the calendar, there's going to be a mismatch in the appointments that are being set versus the appointments not being set. And you always want to make sure that you have one-way sync. If you don't have one-way sync and you have two-way sync, what will happen is any calendar you put on your personal will create a contact in here. So for instance, if you decide to put the dentist and the dentist has got their email on there, that person becomes a contact in here and it will automatically start sending them reminders and all kinds of crazy stuff starts happening. So one-way syncing calendars is always our recommended. And also a lot of people get confused and they click on here to set up their email. When you set up in here and you have a sending domain, like you have Mailgunner LC, this will create a conflict. You only want to do this when Gmail or Google Workspace is your only option and you don't mind it going back and forth. But also know that anytime an email comes in and it's coming from a third party person like Amex, or American Express, or Target, or Costco, or whatever else, they will become contacts in here and it will create a lot of issues in here. We usually don't recommend two-way sync unless you desperately need it. We always recommend you go into LC because that's going to provide a better experience. And this is not the calendar. This will also create a couple of conflicts if you're using Outlook and Google at the same time. If you are a Microsoft user and you're using Microsoft calendars, make sure that you have nothing Google connected. Connect your Microsoft calendar first and then come in here and connect and sync your Microsoft calendar. If you try to do that with Google, we understand that there is a bunch of issues that happen there, so be very careful. The other thing, as of now, as of this current video, if you all of a sudden make a uh, reoccurring appointment and you change the reoccurring appointment in Microsoft, it tends to not always go back in to the system, especially if it was a long-term reoccurring appointment. So there's issues with reoccurring appointments here, especially if you change or move the date of the reoccurring appointment. So mind that as you're kind of connecting it. In our opinion, Google Calendars is always the way to go. It just has the best accuracy to go in. And then it also comes with the choice of calendars. In our experience, we will recommend hands down that the round robin calendar, even if it's a single person, will always be the best accurate because it carries a bunch of values in there. For instance, it will carry your Zoom value and everything else. If you're using an event calendar, that's good when you have like a bunch of calendars and you only want a specific calendar inside of your Google account. That's the only time you want to use that. Other than that, if you are not using a round robin, your Zoom won't pull in and your meeting appointment short value will be completely blank. And the accuracy of the round robins is, tends to be better for us and there's less disconnects. 
Don't know why we brought it up to a bunch of the developers. I know that they're working on it, but again, a quick little tip for you guys is to, you know, not have headaches over it. Round Robin calendar, make sure you sync. Don't do two-way email because that creates some problems in there. And if you're using Microsoft, do everything Microsoft, then connect Google if you have to, but always do the calendars and make sure they're synced and checking for conflicts. And if there's ever a disconnect, just reintegrate and follow that same order. Reintegrate, disconnect Google if you're using Microsoft and just do Microsoft, all the calendars first, then go back and reconnect Google if you're using Google, just disconnect everything Google, re-add it and come back in and sync the calendars. Again, remember, in syncing the calendars, you are immediately going to that bottom right here and you're making sure there's no yellow and the calendar down here is checking for conflicts. Again, super tip. So the next big thing that we wanna share with you, the next tip, and again, it's no secret, but it does help out a lot, is the search boxes. There are search boxes everywhere inside a high level that nobody takes advantage of. So for instance, if you wanna search a contact, and this is great for your VAs or help, you come in here and search a name and it will show you everywhere this name exists and you can just instantly click on the name and go right to the contact, right to the opportunity, right to the email. It's amazing. You gotta make sure you're using that. The second thing is if you're working in automations, a lot of people when they're working in automations and they're searching for a particular one, just type in here, appointments, right? Like I wanted my appointment one, boom. And it pulls out all the appointments like that. You can easily see what's filtered and what's not. You can also filter by recent and show your copy workflow history of where things are. And then you can do it as a list and you can also filter these out by statuses, all that are inactive, public published and paused. The other piece of it is same thing with searching for funnels, custom tags, you name it. It's all here in the search for everything that you have. Utilize the search. It's going to make your life easier. Even when you're creating workflows and you're trying to figure out, I need the starting trigger or whatever else you come in here at any time that you open, get used to pulling in the actual search. So for instance, if I come in here and I create a new action, Boom, I can just search the triggers right here. And I'm telling you, these search boxes are pretty much everywhere inside of here, in sites, in tags, in custom values, in custom fields. It will make your life significantly easier in here. The other one, and this is no secret, but again, an incredible tip that's gonna save you countless hours, is you can set filters inside of here for whatever conversations you're having, especially in conversations. So you wanna knock out all the Facebook and the Instagram stuff, leave them off. You wanna just focus on SMS, leave that on, and email, you can go back and forth and you can go ahead and hit apply and then you can always go back and clear filters and again notice here here's a search box so you can be very specific to the searches you're doing it makes things incredibly easy and it makes it like the whole process like so much faster and everything that you're doing inside a high level plus you won't pull your hair out if you can't find something again search boxes filters definitely a world of difference in everything that you do same thing with opportunities there is filters in here there is search opportunities in here so these work hand in hand just make sure you're doing it and the sorts are really really cool and the last bonus for for everything that you have, if you're using tags and you're trying to find customers, there is nothing better than you coming in here and basically using the columns that you can select so you can sort by all kinds of things that you've created already. And more importantly, once you got the columns sorted, believe it or not, they actually work and you can make them into saved lists. So for instance, if I created a thing called email lead score and I wanted to sort by that lead score, I can. I can not only sort it, but I can save a view. Once I select the columns that I want to see, I can come in here and then save and make it an actual smart list that I can constantly go into and check out. And then on top of it, if I wanna share that with everybody on my team, I come in here and I hit the three little hamburger menus right here and I share with everybody on my team and I hit save. Now everybody has access to that filter, that view and that breakdown. So again, these little tips and tricks have saved us ton of absolute time and we're hoping it's gonna do the same thing for you. So we hope you enjoy this video and stay tuned for the next one.